Welcome to the Gridiron Fantasy Football Show. This is Joe Tro, and I am, as always, joined with T. Quiz. However you are listening, thank you for making us part of your day. This is week eight. What's going on, T. Quiz? You know what? Nothing much, Joe. Uh, not, I'm not feeling too hot coming off of a loss in my fantasy football league. That was tough. Yeah. Well, now that we're on the radio show, uh, what do you think the matchup of the week is this week? Matchup of the week, I'm going to say, is one of the... One of the hottest teams right now, and one of the one of the past hottest teams, and that's you versus Ryan Muskin. Taylor Aquista against Ryan Muskin, week eight. Taylor is five and two, coming off a loss against Nathan. Ryan is four and three, coming off a win against Brandon. Um, first off the bat, Taylor, are there any moves you're going to make? Any swaps? Uh, well, that just depends on whether or not Calvin Johnson or Jimmy Graham is going to be healthy this week. Uh, other than that, uh, as of right now, probably I'll probably switch LaShawn McCoy out for Andre Holmes, but uh, is there anything that you can see Ryan possibly doing? Um, let's see. He's got Andy Dalton and Col- Colin Kaepernick's going to buy. Is it a must-start for Aaron Rodgers, you think? Aaron Rodgers, Eddie Lacy. Oh, yeah. He's got the Green Bay quarterback, Green Bay running back. That looks pretty solid. Sunday night football against New Orleans. New Orleans is looking pretty bad lately. Uh, Ben Tate, though, I don't think Ben Tate is a good running back for fantasy football. He is not. Ryan definitely needs to be putting in Ronnie Hillman, which I told him to do last week. Once again, did not listen to your boy, and he got burned, but he still ended up winning. But uh, Ben Tate got three against a Jacksonville defense who sucks. So do you think it's a must start for Ronnie Hillman? Well, Ben Tate only did bad because the the Cleveland Browns offense just all around played so bad that game. Yeah. Uh, if you look at Brian Hoyer, uh, he was awful like this week. Yeah. You need you need your quarterback to set up the run in order to be an effective running back, and Brian Hoyer just did not do that. There's been a, a lot of uh, rumors going around the league that Johnny Manziel may have a chance to start next week. Okay. So look out for that. You're gonna put him over Jay Cutler. Not a chance. No, I'm not putting him in. I'm just, I'm just saying. Okay. Okay. Uh, the Cleveland Browns could potentially uh, start, or at least give Johnny Manziel a chance. He's not going to start, but he might, he might get a couple reps. He might get a. He's not going to start. There's no way. Uh, we'll move on to Ryan's uh, receiving core. He's got Andre Johnson, who's coming off a Monday night game where he did decent at best. He got single digit points. I don't know, and he's got Alshon, who Alshon Jeffries having a tough time chemistry-wise with the Chicago Bears and Jay Cutler. What do you think about Sammy Watkins possibly starting? Do you think do you think Ryan should think about that? Well, last week I just haven't seen it. Well, obviously you gotta you gotta look into depth at this. Sammy Watkins obviously had a big week last week. Uh, I just haven't seen the consistency from him. Uh, but definitely you have to think about starting Sammy Watkins over Alshon Jeffrey this next week. Even though, let's see, Alshon Jeffrey's playing New England. Do you think, I mean, New England's pass defense is sketchy, but they can also be hot. Uh, and Andre Johnson's playing Tennessee. You think Andre is a must start? Yeah, Andre Johnson established himself as a wide receiver one for Ryan Muskin. Uh, I don't think on a, on a good team like yours per se, I don't think, uh, he would be a wide receiver one, but right now for Ryan Muskin, definitely a must start. All right, he's got his tight end, Jordan Reed Washington. And I know everybody's talking about it. Everybody's thinking about it. Colt McCoy possibly, likely starting for the Washington Redskins. How much of an impact is that on Jordan Reed and on and if, if anybody who anybody who has a uh, Washington skill position? What do you think? I mean, to be honest, uh, I watched Colt McCoy play actually uh, this past week. He actually looked pretty well, uh, pretty good. I mean, I I couldn't see him not doing well this week. Jordan Jordan Reed will probably get eight to ten points. I I think Colt McCoy is actually a good fit for this Washington Redskins offense. Okay, uh, possibly look to Jordan Reed. Possibly, I'm I'm predicting he'll probably get eight, man, probably six points, seven points. Dallas is playing really good. Uh, he's got Demarius against San Diego. San Diego's defense, that's a Thursday night. That's next Thursday. That is going to be a good game. San Diego and at Denver. And he's got the Chargers defense. How much, I mean, he's got Demarius and Chargers defense. How? What do you think, is that going to affect Ryan? 
<laughs> well, I mean, obviously you cannot start the Chargers defense, but you got to look at his bench. I mean, he's got the 49ers defense on a bye. Yeah, he should have so, looked at that. He should have looked at that from the past and said, I got a bye with the 49ers defense and I got the Chargers playing Denver. He should have saw that in the beginning, and that's a mistake by Ryan Muskin. Yeah, I mean, that's good for me if he starts the Chargers defense, but honestly, in my my, my opinion, you definitely cannot do that. All right. Um, let's go back to your team. So you said you're going to put – you say you're gonna put Shady in for Andre Holmes, right? Yeah, that's that's definitely gonna happen. That's definitely I happening. Don't, I don't know. Pending Calvin Johnson and Jimmy Graham, I don't know what's gonna happen there. If Calvin Johnson is listed as questionable, would you take the risk? Well, I don't think there's gonna be a risk involved. I think he's either gonna play or he's not gonna play. I mean, if he's fully healthy, he's gonna play. Even even if he's ninety percent, there's no way the Lions are gonna play him. Okay. Um, so. I mean, if they say he's ready to go, I'm going to start him in my wide receiver two slot. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, what about Jimmy Graham has been struggling all year, and last week got you zero points, and you do not want that to happen again against a Green Bay team who is capable of producing big points, especially against bad defenses. Is there any chance you're going to start Jared Cook against a Kansas City defense? Again, going back, we're going to see how the week goes with Jimmy Graham. But Jimmy Graham and, the, and Drew Brees, I don't know where their chemistry went, but it is in another area code. Like, this is, this is the, the most painful season I've watched of the New Orleans Saints. Tim Geary, I'm sorry for you. Um, honestly, uh, Jimmy Graham, I hope he gets better. I hope that he starts to play better. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Here's consideration to start Jared Cook. Okay, okay. And then Seahawks defense or Bills defense against Jets? Or you want to leave that leave that up uh, in the air so Ryan doesn't have any? What do you think? Uh, the Seahawks defense, I don't know what to say. Yeah, they're just not playing well at all. They're going against a very hot Cam Newton. I, I might go with the Bills defense this week against the Jets. I think that might be a wise choice. Bills defense are looking good against the run. What are they? I think they are first against the run. Not too certain. Have to fact check that. Against the pass, they're defense. Uh, against okay. the pass, they're decent. And the Jets don't have much of a passing game, even though they did acquire Percy Harvin uh, in the week. But we'll see how that goes. And then is Goskowski a must start over in Mason Crosby? That's not even a question. I can't. Every, I can't maybe. believe you even have Mason on the bench. Like, how are you going to do that to Steven? Well, I'm just I'm just waiting for the bye week for the Patriots before I start Mason. Okay. All right. So Steven is a must start. Uh, who do you think on Ryan's team is the most most threatening and most capable of putting up huge points? Well, it's obviously Demarius Thomas. I mean, this dude has been an absolute monster the past the last three weeks, literally dropping over seventy fantasy points. He is. Unbelievable. Uh, he had a slow start at the beginning of the season, but this dude has picked it up, and look for him to drop 20-plus this week against the Chargers. All right, so any last things, or should we go straight to predictions? Um. Well, obviously, just a last-minute thing, Ronnie Hillman got to start him, I think, for Ryan Muskin. I'm, would you agree? Yeah, I think you will, too. Okay. Well, uh, other than that, I, I'm not going to... Judge my own game. I'm gonna leave that completely up to you. All right, and I just wanna, I just wanna make sure. But did I, did I say last week that Nathan was gonna beat you? I, did I predict that game right? No, you said that I was going to win. I thought I predicted that Nathan was gonna beat you because I think pretty sure you got pissed. No, I, I did not. Okay, well, this week I'm going with Ryan Muskin, and this is my reason why. Ryan Muskin will win this game. He's going to win this game big, and he because he, he's leaning on Aaron Rodgers and Eddie Lacy's shoulders. His wide receivers are too strong. His his whole team is, is solid. Taylor's team is just too sketchy, too much injury prone. His quarterback is just, he's hated by the team. His running backs are his only strong suit. His wide receivers are not good. His tight end sucks. His flex sucks, except for Shady. Shady's on and off. His defense sucks. Steven is probably his best player besides DeMarco. Ryan Muskin <laughs> will win this game 110 to 85. 110 to 85. Ryan Muskin will win this game.
All right, so I'm going to go back to uh, last week when I asked you this question. Is Ryan Musk in an elite team in this league? He's not elite. And why? He's not elite. Why? Because why is he four and that? three, and he's he's still his beginning. Of the, elite teams are good the whole season. He has three losses on his record, and he's not gonna. He's not elite. He's got to. He's got to be like nine and three before he's elite. He's just got too many losses. I don't think anybody's really elite in this. Uh, so are you saying if you were a three-loss team that you would not be elite anymore? No. I don't really consider myself elite right now at five and two. Do you consider anybody elite in this league? No. Who do you consider the best team in this league? Me. And why is that? Points for record. How does that have anything to do with that? I thought we were talking about who has the best team. Because the best team puts up points? I mean, that's true, but you put up week six against Matt Burm 77. Okay. So how, how are you the best team in the league? Week one over 100, week two over 100, week three over 100, week four, five over 100. And then week six and seven? Week Bad weeks. A.J. Green's out, Rashad Jennings is out. My team is not you're that good. Best, but you're the best team in the league. Yeah. I don't... So I mean I mean I have Calvin Johnson and Jimmy Graham out. Calvin why, Johnson's why? out. Calvin Johnson's injured. Jimmy Graham got zero last week. Jimmy Graham only played fifteen snaps. Okay, because he's injured. You might have, yeah he's injured. There goes my point. You did, your your claim was you're the best team in the league, but not right now because of injuries. So no. I, I don't understand. I think I'm the best team in the league right now, even with my two injuries. But the reason I lost last week was because of my injuries, but I think I have the best team. I don't think – I think even if Jimmy Graham and Calvin Johnson were healthy, I don't think they'd be putting up big points. All right. That's how I feel. I think Ryan Muskin has a better team than you right now at this week. But I think you still have a better long-term – you're going to finish out with a better record than him. All right. All right. So I'm still keeping my prediction of Ryan Muskin beating you by about – I don't even know what I said. 25, I think. Jesus. What do you think? You know, I've never lost at home, right? Are you going <laughs> right. to... True, but I don't really care. Um, I'm the are, best home team in this league. Are you going to give league. Are you gonna give a prediction, or do you want to move on? Uh, I'm not. I'm going to be completely unbiased here. So you're not going to give a prediction? No, not at all. All right. All. Uh well after that what team what matchup do you want to go to next? Uh I'm thinking uh let's go in my opinion the second uh best matchup of the week Matthew Ryanger taking on uh myself Joe Okay. Um Matt, these two teams are both coming off uh wins. Uh Matthew Ridinger beating JP Salopek and me beating Darius Sharp. You want to lead things off? Yeah. Um, I first want to ask you, uh, what's what's your plan for your lineup this week? Um, my plan is uh, at the quarterback position, obviously starting Russell. Running back position, Marshawn. And I still don't know about my running back, too. I've got to see how bad Pierre Thomas' injury is. It might be Mouse Yard. It might be Anton Smith. I might make a trade. Uh, that's still up for grabs. I don't want to release too much on what I'm going to do to Matt Ridinger in case he's listening. Uh, wide receiver position is depends if AJ Green's back. He said he might be back. Depends. I don't think I'm going to start Percy, but there's a chance. I'm not ruling anything out. Uh, Odell Beckham obviously has a bye, so it'll probably be Kelvin and Steve. But Kelvin does play Seattle, but we'll see. Tight end, obviously. What? If AJ Green were to say that he has uh, that he's going to play this week, are you going to start him? Yeah. And why is that? I will probably because he's playing Baltimore. Who's well? I don't know. I just AJ Green. I've had him on my team past two years, and I, he's he's coming. Every team, every game that he's played, he's got double digits, and that's only been three out of the six. But still, um, but aren't what? Aren't you afraid that he's going to not get as many snaps? Um, no, because um, Andy Dalton knows he's there, so I think Andy Dalton's he knows he's like I got AJ 
right in right next to me. I got the easy pass out in case I get in trouble. But do you think there's a chance that he could turn into a Jimmy Graham and just not get any receptions because of the limit he gets on his touches? Um, no, I don't think so. You think he's too much of a playmaker? He's too much of a playmaker. I mean, week one, he had like five points, and then all of a sudden, 30 seconds left, bam, 70-yard touchdown pass from Andy Dalton. I don't know where that came from, but that was pretty nice. Um, so we'll see. But I later on in the weeks, you might you might check to see if I start Odo Beckham because I'm thinking about either starting him or making a trade. Um, we'll see about that. But that's pretty much where I stand. Patriots defense and Adam Vinatieri are my starting defense and kicker, respectively. Are you nervous at all about Julius Thomas this week? No, not at all. Um, just- you can't. After his two points, yeah, I mean, obviously anybody can make that argument, but the man's a touchdown machine, and Peyton's, Peyton knows he's there. Peyton relies on him to block and to catch touchdown passes, and I'm not I'm not worried at all, to be honest. San Diego's a good team, Joe. I know, but uh, I know. All right. It's fine. I mean, look at those teams, though. Buffalo, Jacksonville, Jets, Oakland, Kansas City. Come on. And Kansas City beat them on a game-winning field goal, so obviously you can exploit them somehow. Kansas City found a way to do it. I'm pretty sure Peyton Manning will. How, how do you think the Patriots' defense is going to do? They've been off and on this whole year. I mean, you look week two at Minnesota, 27, and then you look week four, negative four at Kansas City. I know. I know. They are they are on and off. Um, but they're my team, and they play uh, Chicago Bears, who are having chemistry issues. And... I think that's going to be a good game, a good one o'clock afternoon game, but um, it's. I mean, they're not the ideal defense to start this week. I know that, but honestly, I don't really have any other option. I think it's going to be a high-scoring affair, so I don't know. We'll see. It might not be a good choice. I'm not saying it's a good choice, but we'll see how it goes. All right, coming off of you, or we're we're gonna move away from your team. Uh, what do you think Matthew Ridinger should do this week? Well, Drew Brees um, blew it. Let's just say it out loud. He blew that game against the Lions, threw a pick in the final three minutes to give Lions the win. Drew Brees, I hate Drew Brees. I'm going to say that outright. I have always not necessarily him. say he blew that game. I mean, he, the yeah. man threw for 300 yards, two touchdowns. I mean, that's that's a pretty solid game in my opinion. It doesn't opinion. matter if you throw for 5 million yards. If you throw a pick in the last three minutes to lose the game, you lost the game. And that's all that matters. Well, he's on, he's on all the blame on himself. He's on I mean, clutch. You can't just say it was the defense's – or you, you can't just say it's his problem. you got to say that it's also the defense's problem. I mean – Did you, did you see did you see the replay situation. of the pick? The team put them in that situation. Did you see the replay of the pick? I did. I did. It was a, it was a Brandon Whedon type pick. I I admit it was botched in a way. So, but I I just don't. I don't think that you should put like all the problem on Drew Brees. I I'm sorry. Okay, but um, he's got Matt Ryan on his bench who is playing nine thirty. That's a really late. Why is that at nine thirty? I'm I don't know what. What is that? Why does it say nine thirty on there? Is that Uh, you? Atlanta and Detroit are playing in London. Oh, wow. Okay. Is that that could actually shake things up. I was confused about that, but T Quist yeah. coming in with the nice geographical uh, stats there. Well, my reporter in the room over there uh, told me at the last second. Okay. Um well then he probably shouldn't start Matt Ryan. Well it's probably gonna be low scoring. We'll see though. Anquan Bolden has a bye. Larry Donnell has a bye. So his tight end is obviously going to be Delaney Walker, who absolutely is terrible. I'm going to say that. Marquise Colston, after Braden had him for like the first five weeks, uh, Matt Ridinger picks him up. Jordy Nelson's a great wide receiver. I don't think he's going to make any changes. Obviously, Alan Hearns is not a fantasy start. Uh, so he's got Terrence Williams also. Terrence Williams is a nice deep ball threat for Tony Romo. Uh, he's playing really nicely. He's making good catches. I don't know how Matt Reidinger has lasted with the Titans' defense. Has the Titans' defense? I mean, I mean, I mean, they show you why he's three and three. Two negative games, a one-point game, and two di- single-digit games. I don't know about that. We'll see what he does. And Matt Bryant's a decent kicker for Atlanta, but remember that is in London. There's crazy crowds in London, and kickers don't like crazy crowds. So we'll see how Matt Bryant does, but. 
I don't think uh, Matt Ryan will make that many changes right now. I think Matthew Ryinger at least has to add another uh, player in his bench spot. He's got an open slot. You gotta you gotta try to fill your team with depth. I mean, right now I'm looking Alan Hearns, Bishop Stanky, like Bishop Stanky. That's Stanky. Yeah, that's right. Um, I just don't, I don't think that they're gonna be reliable in the future. You gotta get at least a backup in there that's like that you can rely on somewhat. Uh, that's and that's my opinion. Uh, Matt Ryan, I obviously think you should start over Drew Brees. I think, in my opinion, um, okay. I don't think I think the confidence isn't going to be there for Drew Brees uh, when he plays Green Bay next week. Uh, again, ESPN has him projected at only twelve, so I look for Matthew Ridinger to start Matt Ryan potentially. Um. Okay. Do you think he'll make that change though? You know, I don't. I don't know. I haven't talked to him. Um, I. I would, <laughs> in my opinion. But I mean, he probably won't. Drew Brees is a good quarterback. I, don't, I mean, you obviously don't like him. I think he's probably, arguably, a top fifteen quarterback to ever play this game. Uh, that's just wow. my opinion. Wow. Okay. What do you, you have something to say about that? <laughs> yeah, I definitely not top fifteen. Is you said top fifteen, right? Yeah, yeah, I, don't, I would definitely disagree with that. I don't know uh, if you know your quarterbacks or not, but uh, we'll see. Do you know uh, how many yards Drew Brees has in his career? I know. You know how many yards? You know how many touchdown passes he has? How many rings does he have? He has the, one. The Tom Brady has three. Hall- Joe, come what? on. What? The man's a walking Hall of Famer. Dude. Gosh, shut up. He's so dumb. Are All you right. trying to tell Drew Brees is not a Hall of Famer, Hall of Famer quarterback? He's probably a Hall of Famer, but I don't think he should be a Hall of Famer. They'll probably give it to him just because he's Andrew Brees. But does he? Have, should he be? No, absolutely not. But they'll give it to him just because he's Drew Brees. All right, that's your opinion. All right, so you want to make your prediction? Um, Are you ready to? I'm actually. I'm. I'm going to go with the upset this week. I'm picking Matthew Ridinger over Joe Travado. I'm going to say. By single digits, this is going to be a Monday Night Football barn burner. Uh, I think, in the end, Terrence Williams from the Dallas Cowboys pulls it off for Matthew Ridinger. I'm going to say Matthew Ridinger, 102, Joe Travato, 96. Wow, not even giving me the 100-point game? Nope. Not even giving me, okay. Right. So, 102 to, you said 96? Correct. Okay, we'll see, uh, we'll see how accurate or inaccurate. That is which matchup are we going to next? I'll, I'll make I'll I'll make the choice this time. All right. Uh, we did both of ours. So let's move on to. Is there any other good ones? Wow. Uh, Matt Brem, Nathan Hensel. Why not? All right. Uh, ESPN has Nathan Hensel projected to beat Matt Brem by sixteen points. Just keeping that in Any mind. Buys. Okay, uh, Matt Ridinger, or, or Nathan, I'm sorry, Nathan Hensel has the first buy of anybody we've analyzed so far. Uh, it's his kicker, and he has Nick Folk, so obviously that'll be an easy change for Nathan Hensel. Uh, Nick Folk's coming off a 14 point game, 4 for 5 on field goals uh, against the Patriots, playing Buffalo in New and that's, York. That's just all the Jets do, Joe. Like, all they do is just kick field goals time after time that's again. True. That's Smith true. Smith is just not good enough to get. Terrible, terrible red zone team. Maybe Percy can make a difference. We'll see about that. That's for another discussion. Matt Brem is coming off a loss. Questions are lingering around the league and around the country. Is Matthew Brem playing? A lot of people are saying no, and if he is, he's doing a terrible job, and he's playing Nathan Hensel. Matt Brem. He's three and three. Three and four. Three and four, my mistake. Three and four. Uh, Possibly, besides Brand Smith, one of the worst teams in the league. I think. Um, Tom Brady starting quarterback against Chicago defense. What's going to happen there? I think I, I think Tom Brady rips apart the Chicago Bears. They're just their their chemistry is just not there, Joe. I said this earlier in the show. Literally, Tom Brady. Look for him to drop twenty five this week. A big game from Tom Brady. But but I, if I can just add, their we don't know if their defense is on chemistry. Their offense is, but. I think their defense is fine. 
I mean, I know they let up a lot of points to Miami, but um, well, you got to think about Jay Cutler. Jay Cutler has given teams so many points with turnovers. I mean, we're talking time and time again. Jay Cutler is throwing picks. He's either fumbling. It's just, it's just not looking good from the Bears. And I, I just think Tom Brady is a good enough quarterback to make them pay for that. Chicago's going to fight for this game. They need this win right before a bye week on week eight. They need this win to get back into divisional contention with Green Bay. Uh, so they're going to fight, and when you fight hard, sometimes you make turnovers, and Jay Cutler is definitely definitely makes turnovers. So we'll see how that goes. What about? Do you think you start Alex Smith? Do you think that's an option against a St. Louis team? That is not an option. I don't even know why Alex Smith is still on Matt Brim's team. Okay. Obviously, going back to the rumor where he might not be playing. Uh, that's for another discussion. Though. Uh, no, Sean Marino, obviously on IR. <laughs> so what do you I think? Don't know. What do you think about St. Louis? Do you think they're a real team? Uh, St. Louis has a shot. I mean, their quarterback is very good. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I mean, he is performing week after week. I mean, he he beat the Seattle Seahawks, Joe. Super Bowl defending champions. Well, I don't think he beat them. Special teams accounted for 21 points. Or, I'm sorry, 14 points with a, with a fake punt. You can't tell me that the quarterback didn't at least get them there, though. Uh, kickoff return. I mean, I guess. But when, you have, a, when you have a kickoff well. return and a punt return for touchdown the same game... It's hard to lose that game. I'm sorry. You, you have to try to lose that game. So, that's that's very true. I think St. Louis. I think the St. Louis's. De- I think St. Louis's defense is for real. So watch out. Uh, St. Louis is for real. I think. I mean, you. They could be a playoff contender. I mean, they're doing really well. Uh, offense, defense, special teams, like you said. I. Look for St. Louis to be like have that chance for a wild card at least later in the season. All right, so we're saying Tom Brady is a must start. He's got Alfred Morris, who's questionable. Uh, do you have any information on his injury? Uh, Alfred Morris, uh, I do not. So let's see what he has. Uh, are you seeing anything on? I think he's got an ankle. Yeah, it's a left, left ankle, left ankle injury. injury. Um, okay. I doesn't say. I don't know when he's be back. He's questionable, so it's obviously not too bad. But I don't think Matt Brem can take that chance. But then again, he has nothing on his bench, so he's gonna play him, and he's gonna get probably nothing. Legarrette Blunt's probably gonna get nothing. Larry Fitzgerald against a Philadelphia defense who's who's picked it up, and Buffalo defense who's guarding New York Jets. Eric Decker, Matt Brem. He might get a a career fantasy gr- gridiron fantasy football l- week low this week. You think so? He's gonna I, get I, he's gonna I, get I, worse I, than Ryan Muskin in week one. I think Matt Brem's team is talented. No, I mean for him to go three and four and rumors for him to go three and four and rumors circulating that he is not playing. I think that he's, his team is talented. I just think that he needs to make an attempt to be a quote-unquote elite team in the future. I I mean, Matt Brim, if you, Joe, if you start playing, you could honestly have a shot at $90. I'm just saying. I know, I know. His tight end is Martellus Bennett, who no question is a good tight end. Jeremy Macklin um, is not that good. I mean, he's... He's two on and off. Cardinals defense. That's the Cardinals Philadelphia game is going to be a battle of the defense. It's going to be low scoring. That's going to be very low offense. So watch out for those two defenses to get high points. I think his his Cardinals defense, besides Tom Brady, will get the most points of anybody on his team. I'm going to say that right now. And uh, Robbie Gold is obviously Robbie Gold kicking field goals. Team doesn't really like him that much, but I don't think you might start Matt Prater. But I don't think you should. Probably keeping Robbie Gold. You want to move on to 420, or you want to keep talking? Well, first, uh, I, w- I just want to say one more thing. Uh, going back to the Alfred Morris injury, he uh, apparently rolled or twisted his ankle in the fourth quarter and left that game early. So he is questionable for the Dallas game. But he most likely will play. All right, thank you for that. Uh, Nathan Hensel, Matthew Stafford. He's got Ben Roethlisberger on his bench. Must start for Matthew Stafford, yes or no? 
Uh, Matthew, Matthew Stafford, uh, if if he gets Calvin Johnson back, uh, he I mean he could put up what he put up against the Jets in Week One, which was twenty or not? Um, excuse me, the Giants Week One, three hundred forty six yards, two touchdowns, twenty nine fantasy points. Uh, if he does not come back, that offense is a mess. I mean, you've seen it the past three weeks. Buffalo, 11. Minnesota, 11. Saints, 11. Or 15, excuse me. I, I just don't see Matthew Stafford doing performing the way he did earlier in the season without Calvin Johnson. Um. Okay. What about Le'Veon Bell Uh He's got Steven Jackson. I think his running backs are fine, what he has right now. Golden Tate obviously broke free for that huge touchdown last week. Julian Edelman is not a fantasy wide receiver. I keep saying this week in, week out. Yet again, gets four points. Um, Nathan needs to make a change here. He needs to start Wes Welker, I think. Wes Welker is going to do something this game. And I think he's starting to get in flow, in rhythm, coming off the injury. So I would say start Wes Welker. Uh, what do you think about that? Well, I think, I think Julian Edelman is a start for Nathan Hensel. Julian Edelman, I mean, he's not putting up the numbers that he should be putting up like he did earlier in the season. But in my opinion, Julian Edelman, you need to, you need to wait on him. I mean, he's a good wide receiver. He's, a, he's probably, if not the number one, the number two wide receiver on the Patriots roster. And you, just, you have to give him a chance to get touches and to get yards. All right. Um... Tight end Rob Gronkowski, and he's got Antonio Gates. That's a great flex and tight end right there. I don't think he should make a chance to that. Defense, he's got Colts with Broncos defense on the bench. Uh, I'd say start Colts. Uh, they're playing Pittsburgh, but Colts, Colts are looking good. Yeah, they are. But real quick, going back to the, the Rob Gronkowski and Antonio Gates, the, you don't see this every day. You don't, you don't see... A fantasy player starting not only one tight end but a second at the flex position. But he, I mean, they have proved week after week that they they belong there. And Nathan Hensel, I mean, four and three. That's that's pretty good. Uh, that is very good. All right. Uh, any last things you want to add? I'm ready for predictions. Um, obviously, I I think Nathan Hensel should definitely drop Brian and Hoyer. Uh, after right, last week's yeah, performance, yeah. that's just un- unacceptable. Well, he just picked him up. I mean, he picked he, him up uh, last week, I think. Yeah, he needs to drop him. That was a terrible decision on Nathan Hensel's part. And actually, if we can go back to Matt Brem for one second, his bench, his wide receivers are good. He's got T.Y. and V-Jax. And he's, he, because he's not playing, he's not starting them. Those are the only two people that would give him a chance against this matchup. I think Nathan is the heavy favorite. Well, what are you going to say? I wouldn't say that Matt Brim isn't playing. That's rumors circulating. I I, I don't know. Taylor, I, I haven't talked had to Matt Brim. I will, though. I will get that report week. during the week. What would you say? Two people on buys last week. That he started. Maybe he forgot to get on. Maybe he just oh didn't. Oh, my gosh. Stop, stop, stop backing him up. That, stop defending him. I'm not defending him. I'm just saying that there's, there's more okay. of a chance that he is just forgetting and just rather than not playing altogether. I mean, there is there's a large cash reward on the line here, Joe. Don't forget. I would be more if Brand Smith paid, but that's a whole other discussion for another time. Um, we'll go to predictions. I'm taking Nathan in this matchup. Brandon's not going to make any changes. I will bet you $5 that his entire starting lineup s- stays the same. Uh, obviously, unless you tell him at lunch or whatever you see him in school, unless you make him forcefully do it. But uh, it's going to stay the same. Nathan's going to make the moves that are necessary, and Nathan will pull this one out. Uh, Nathan will probably get a hundred. He won't get a hundred points. He'll probably get like ninety-two, and I would look for Matt Brem to probably get in the fifties, middle fifties, fifty-five. Yeah, I'm going to look for this game to be more of a low-scoring affair. I don't think either team's going to really score that much. I think I think it's going to be a blowout, but I think that Nathan's only going to score seventy-five points. I I think the final score will definitely be seventy-five. To I'm gonna say 49, Nathan Hensel. All right, uh, we got we got two games left. We did our three favorite games. The two that are left are 
JP Salope. I'm sorry, not that's not that. Ryan, oh, I'm on the wrong week. I'm sorry. All right, week eight. We have Darius Sharp and Braden Callahan, and Brandon Smith and JP Salopek. Both these games are going to be blowouts. What I mean, which one do you want to go first? I don't want to spend too much time on both of these, honestly. I honestly, I want to talk about the Brandon Smith JP Salopek games. I do not think that game's going to be a blowout, and I'm going to show okay. you why. All right, let's do it. So we got Team Taylor's Gay against Team Smith. Brandon is one and six, coming off a close loss to Ryan Muskin. And JP is four and three, coming off a loss against Matthew Ridinger. Um, okay. Before I go we ahead. say anything, I just want to say look at JP's team. Everyone's expecting JP to blow Brandon Smith out, but you've got to look at this team. He has Fred Jackson out. Yep. And now look, look at his lineup. Look at his lineup. Let's take a look. In the bench. In the bench Joyke. position. He's got Joyke. <laughs> start. He's got Joyke. Honestly, he's going to start. He's got you Joyke. cannot start Joyke. a backup running back that gets, uh, I mean, he gets an all right amount of touches, but his yards per carry and, and against the Saints, yeah. I mean, that's three point, what, three? Like, yeah. that's not good. I mean, good thing he had a touchdown in both his last two games because that saved his fantasy numbers. It was, it was you eight, cannot eight, start Joy Bell. I can Bell. just say for the crowd, 18 carries for 48 yards. Uh, obviously, with a touchdown, that gave him a boost in points. Um, but, yeah, he does have Joey Quabell. I think that's how you pronounce it. So, we'll probably have to start him. Uh, what else do you want to say? Well, I also want to say, JP's team, ever since the beginning of the season, has looked... At one of the worst teams in fantasy football, I'm going to say it. His team, he shot himself in the foot. And I've said that in past weeks. I've said it. But his team is getting worse. I mean, honestly, just just look at this depth. Yeah. Um, I just. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say his depth is not very strong. Obviously, Josh Gordon, I know he's hanging around for that. Um, and he's got a kicker, um, a tight end, wide receiver. He's got decent positions, but Brown's defense, is is he seriously starting them? They got one double-digit game. Negative two, 11, oh. one, three, six, eight. I would say I would say that's a good decision for JP, but the Browns just got... T- Torched against Jacksonville, arguably one of the worst football teams in the NFL. And, I mean, and I'll, tell you what, I'll tell you what, Oakland is looking at that last game, and they're 0-7, 0-6, one of the two, they haven't won a game. And they're looking at that game and saying, wow, we have a chance against this Browns game. We have a chance to get our first dub, and they're going to come out all guns blazing. They're going to pull out all the stops. They're going oh, yeah. to do everything Oakland, they can. Right out of the gate, they're going to be hot. The Browns' defense, if they're not careful – they might get a negative point game, which they haven't done since week one against Pittsburgh. But the Browns, they're in trouble. Because if they don't step it up, I mean, if you asked us two weeks ago, we would say Jacksonville win, Oakland oh, yeah. win. Pretty sure I said that too. Buccaneers win. Like, now it's looking Jacksonville lost, Oakland lost, maybe the Buccaneers even a loss. Yeah. I mean, what do you have to say about the Browns? I. I know it's one loss. Everybody pulled this against the Patriots when they got blown out by Kansas City and Patriots bounced right back. But then again, Patriots have Tom Brady and the Browns have uh, Brian Manziel and Johnny <laughs> Hoyer. We don't even know. So, I mean, it's kind of up in the air at this point. Um, if we go over to who, uh, Brandon, Brandon is still trying to make trades. He's he, The trades he's made mm. are just not good. I don't, he's his, his team's team, not good. I'm going to go ahead and say his team is terrible. His team's terrible. He's taking, uh, he's taking, he's picking up terrible players and giving away his best players. He tried to pick up Brandon Marshall, hoping it would do good. Brandon Marshall has not done crap for him. He tried to pick up Mike Wallace. Mike Wallace is probably his best player on his team. He tried to pick up Cam Newton after he got 33. Cam Newton, classic Cam, gets 14. Frank Gore sharing touches with Carlos. Last two weeks, he got a combined five points. Um, Greg Olson is a good player, uh, one of the best tight ends in the league, but he's also starting two tight ends. Jace Amaro, New York Jets? Well, I just want to add another thing. What is Brandon Smith doing? 
you have Cam Newton, who he's starting apparently this week, Nick Foles, <laughs> Tony Romo, and a fourth and Joe. quarterback in Joe, Joe Flacco. Yeah. You could use two, at least two of those bench spots for two, I don't know, waiver pickups maybe. You're not going to play five quarterbacks or whatever, four quarterbacks or whatever he had. Yeah. And you have Cecil Shorts the third Sucks. Reggie Wayne, sucks. one point last week. Sucks. I Michael Crabtree, five. I mean. Zero yeah. automatically. <laughs> automatically zero. So right there you have what one bench opportunity that you can have? I mean Wait. this this is a disgrace to the league. This is a joke. I am ashamed to be in a league with this kind of bench, with this kind of team, and he really needs to get this cleaned up. And a lot of people are saying he has no shot at playoffs. I agree with them. He is done and this week he is going to be officially mathematically I'm gonna well not mathematically I guess, but in my opinion, if he when he loses the JP this week, he's done automatically out, and I think he might try to take money from people. He's gonna start being desperate and take money, possibly offering people like give them money and I'll give you Brandon Marshall for a buck or something like that. He's capable of doing that because he needs money for weed and especially since he called his dad and his dad was ripping on him for not having a job. So we'll see how that goes. Um, well, if, but ex- what's he gonna- excuse me, real quick, Joe or not Joe? <laughs> sorry. Brandon Smith, if he loses this game against J.P. Salpeck, he will be 1-7. He will be four games out of sixth place, which is what you need for a playoff spot. Four games. There's only seven games left in the regular season. I, I mean, give or take one or two. I'm just saying that off the top of my head. I but you're right, yeah. I just, I don't see, like, if he loses to J.P., I, I don't see I don't see Brandon Smith making the playoffs. It's impossible. Yeah, I mean at this point he just needs to drop like two of his quarterbacks, maybe even three. He's in desperation mode at this point. We've said this for weeks on end. He's clearly not listening. I have I have tried to propose trades with him and he is not cooperating. Proposing the most ridiculous trades, countering the most ridiculous trades. Um, if we look at his schedule. He's playing JP. He plays a Darius Sharp team who we would normally say was an easy dub, but again, we're talking about Brand Smith. And then he plays your boy. And he plays arguably one of the best teams in Joe Travada. That's true. And then, I mean, his schedule's not easy. Last two games are you and Braden Callahan. Those are automatic. And the game before, that's Matt Ridinger. So it's automatic. I'm, it's out. He's done. And we're, we're not saying that it's impossible. No, I but- am. It's pretty much impossible. <laughs> like, honestly. Yeah, we might have the first person officially out of the playoffs and a classic person who has not played yet. Um, that's just, oh, I mean, going back to what I said before, games, there is officially only six. Six games? Six games left, you said? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, so obviously this game... Congrats, JP Salopec, you're getting the dub this week. And if if you find some way to lose this JP, you will never hear the end of it. So just make sure you win this. Well, I uh, think, honestly, in my opinion, if JP were to lose this game, I we might have to talk about JP possibly being out of the playoffs or at least getting a sixth seed. JP, I think, is going to be in. I don't see any problem for JP Salopec. With all the people that are in this league, if you think about it, with the D-Sharps, with the Matt Brems, with the Ryan Muskins even, if you want to put that in cons- uh, comparison, which I just don't, I don't see JP losing it. I think Brayden Callahan has better chance of ma- missing the playoffs than JP Salopec does, even if JP loses this week. Um, but we'll do predictions now. Obviously, uh, I'm going with JP here. JP's going to get probably 120, and t- uh, Brand Smith, especially if he keeps Frank Gorin, who has a buy again. Like I said, he and he doesn't have any uh, any subs, so we're gonna have to see. It's going to be 120 to. 54. Well, in my my proje- projection, I said this was going to be a close game. I think, again, another low-scoring game. I mean, just look at JP's running backs. Fred Jackson out. So who are you going to start? Joke Bell, two points. Brandon Oliver going against <laughs> the Denver Rush defense, which they're probably top five in the league. Probably, what, three points? You got Julio Jones playing in London at 9.30. God knows what he's going to do. Michael Floyd going against the Eagles, who has a very good defense. Jason Witten, he'll probably do good. 
I James Jones don't know what he's gonna do. The Browns defense, I think they're gonna get torched. Dan Bailey probably gonna put up what he usually puts up, eight to ten points. It's just classic Dan. I Peyton Manning's obviously gonna drop twenty to thirty. He's going thirty. I'm predicting Peyton to go with thirty three. And I think Peyton's gonna carry JP's team, but I don't think that JP's team is gonna get over seventy points. I think they're I think the score of this game is going to be JP's going to win, but I think it's going to be 67 to 61, another close low scoring game. 67 61 win by 6. Uh we'll see what you guys have to say about that. Uh we'll go to the last game of this last game of week number 8. And that is Darius Sharp against Braden Callahan. Taste my rainbow against Team Sharp. Team Sharp is coming off a loss to uh, yours truly. He's two and five. Braden Callahan came off a dub against Bran. Uh, I'm sorry, against Matt Brem. Who to Braden's trying to make a playoff push. He's three and four. He's got some momentum. His team is looking pretty good, especially uh, Andy. Andy Luck. If you didn't know who I was talking about, uh, we'll start with Braden's team. Um, obviously, he's got the only quarterback, Andrew Luck. Uh, but Jamal Charles, Justin Forsett. What do you think about his running back duo? I think Jamal Charles is a must start against the Rams, but I don't think I think Justin Forsett's not going to do anything. Honestly, I think he might get six to eight points. Um, I think you might have to try to start. His other options are Ahmad Bradshaw, Nile Davis, backup of Kansas City, and Dwayne. Uh, I'm sorry, and uh, Andre Williams who's on a bye, so he only has Ahmad. I would, yeah, I would. I actually like Ahmad over Justin Forsett, just solely on the fact that Ahmad is hot right now. Yeah, he, I agree with you. He's. He's looking good. He only, only two of his games are single digits, and he's getting he's getting a lot of touchdowns. Well, so. if you look if you look at his rushing yards and his and his touchdowns, uh, they're they're not very good. But if you look at his receiving, his receiving is what's carrying his season right now. And I mean, if you got a quarterback like Andrew Luck, Ahmad Bradshaw right now, I is a must start in my opinion. Uh, let's talk. Let's talk about Travis Kelsey real quick. What do you think that Braden should do with him? Um, St. Louis. We've said it before. St. Louis is a good team, and their defense is holding strong. So I say, do not, do not start Travis Kelsey this week. Start Dwayne Allen. Uh, once again, Andrew Luck is on fire. Dwayne Allen, he's getting touches. I did not think he'd be getting his touches when I uh, traded away, traded him away to Braden earlier in the year. So definitely start Dwayne Allen this week. I'm gonna say. I I like what you said right there. I I just it's it's sketchy to start Dwayne Allen because of who the opponent is. Pittsburgh is very good at stopping tight ends. They're I mean they they showed that they are a very good defense opinion but they one of their key things that they do is they stop tight ends from catching the football so i would start Dwayne allen but i i'd be a little bit sketched out all right um his wide receiver crew is pretty good um he's got nothing on the bench so if he gets an injury he might be screwed but des bryant who is looking really good, who in the beginning of the season I would say would be a bust again, but he only has two games in single digits. Has not broken 20 this year, though, who separates him from elite uh, wide receivers like Demarius. Mohamed Sanu, who has been showing good stuff, but last week obviously was a way off week, but look for him to pick up against Baltimore and Jacksonville and Cleveland coming up in the next three weeks. And Randall Cobb, who is... Randall Cobb. Randall Cobb is the red zone man for Aaron Rodgers. He's broken 20. Des Bryant hasn't broken 20. He broke 20 against Chicago in that so blowout. Five touchdowns in four games. In his last four games. Five touchdowns in so last four games and three in the first day. two. So he's got eight touchdowns on the year. Um, he even got two rushing yards last game too. So uh, 18 points last game. And they're playing a struggling New Orleans team. Oh, and they're yeah. trying to close out this first half of the season before the bye week in week nine. So look for Green Bay to rout, absolutely rout the New Orleans Saints. This will be the low point of the Saints season right here. Uh, and Grandel Cobb, I'm going to predict, will get high teens, possibly 18 points. Yeah, I like that. And coming, going away from uh, his wide receiving crew, uh, what do you think about the Texans' defense? Mm-hmm. Texans defense are, I think, a must-start any week. 
they are really good. Um, I know they played, let's see, they played Dallas, Indianapolis, and Pittsburgh. They play Tennessee this uh, week. Tennessee has not been looking good, especially with their quarterback situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, J.J. Watt. J.J. Watt, I want to give you guys a stat. He has three games this year with one sack and one fumble recovery. Only The closest person has only one of those games, and J.J. Watt has three. I'm looking for J.J. Watt to get his fourth game with a fumble recovery and a sack. J.J. Watt is a monster possible defensive player of the year this year. Uh, and then obviously you got Steven Hauschka, kicker, who that is no question a start. Uh, so we'll move along to Derry Sharp's team. What do you see right off the bat? Uh, well, obviously you got to look at Vernon Davis's bye. Uh, I actually talked to Darius Sharp about what he's going to do with the tight end position. He said he do- he does not want to start Heath Miller, who is on his bench and his backup. He wants to either trade for a tight end or he wants to pick one off of waivers. So look for him to do that later in the week. I would give some advice to Darius. Tight ends are not plentiful on the waivers. Uh, they are very thin on the waivers. It's hard to find a good one. So Heath Miller or trade is about your only option. I don't know who is going to want to trade their tight end because tight ends are so few this year uh, with only about five really good ones. So he might. He probably will. And he's not going to get the trades that he wants because he's not – in the trade circle. If you're proposing trades week in and week out, players know that, or I'm sorry, like teams know that, like we know that in the guys, the guys in the league. And so they'll trade with you. But since Darius hasn't made any trades, people don't really want to trade with him, especially since he's one of the down teams. They don't want to try to give him any hope. And I, I agree with that completely. But I mean, if, if Darius wants to trade for a tight end, I mean, I mean, we're looking at a possible tight end right here in Travis Kelsey from Braden Callahan. True. I mean, he's not, Travis Kelsey is not a, top five tight end but I mean he's he, I mean he's a pretty good tight end for for Darius Sharp who's got no tight ends really I mean Heath Miller doesn't really do anything so do you think Heath Miller will get more or less than Travis Kelsey I think Travis Kelsey will get more than Heath Miller okay I'm just I think honestly if if Darius can get Travis Kelsey for not that much like probably like Keenan Allen or something like look for Darius to do uh, yeah, he does need a tight end, um, and I don't think Braden's going to make that trade, obviously, because Braden's actually smart. So um, He's got Phillip Rivers, who's going against Denver. Thursday night football are usually routes, and Denver um, is looking like the better team. I think this is going to be San Diego's worst game of the year right here. Wow. I think Denver's just too hot. Phillip Rivers, I think, is going to throw two picks. Uh, he'll probably have a couple touchdowns, but I look to him maybe get 15 points. I don't see him getting a lot, and obviously the situation with Gio Bernard is just not good. Might have an injury, might not. Um, And Andre Ellington is really becoming the dark horse of the year. He was just complete, don't start him week one, he sucks, and then he just comes out on fire. 26 points against Denver week five. 15 last week against Oakland week seven. He's definitely a must start. He's doing really good. Um, Any changes? He's got Doug Martin on the bench and Kyrie Robinson. What do you think about that? Well, you're obviously not going to start Doug Martin. You're definitely not going to start Kyrie Robinson. Um, I I wouldn't make I wouldn't make any change if I were Darius. Um, maybe just the, like the tight ends, only thing I can see him doing, to be honest. Um, yeah, he's got Roddy White, Pierre Garcon. He's got two. Okay, two Washington wide receivers on the same team. We know the quarterback situation there. Ah, man, I just don't know. What do you think? Like, is is it just one or the other pretty much that's going to get the big points? I mean, Deshaun Jackson, he he can make big plays happen. Pierre Garçon's obviously their number one. Look for Pierre Garçon to get a good amount of points. He'll probably get anywhere between the eight to fifteen range. Deshaun Jackson, <laughs> to be honest, he'll be from the. 1 to 21 point range. You never know you'll get out of Deshaun Jackson. So, I think I think Pierre Garçon, he'll be he'll be up there. He'll be with he'll have good numbers. Deshaun Jackson, you got to hope for the best. Um what do you what do you think going back to Braden's team? What do you think he should do with Andre Williams from the Giants? Well, Rashad, who I have, is coming back after the bye. He has a bye this week, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, they said he's probably going to come back week nine against Indianapolis. So, obviously, that 
limits Andre Williams touches. And let's not forget about how good Rashad Jennings was. So, um, uh, he needs to just drop him, honestly. I don't think he's going to do anything. I don't think Braden will ever start him again this year. So he's just taking up a bench spot. Well, he's got to wait till Rashad Jennings comes back, obviously. But when Rashad Jennings does come back, he's obviously got to drop him. But if we, I can go back and say that about the Deshaun and Pierre situation. Uh, if you look at Deshaun's fantasy points, week five and six, Deshaun got 21 and 17. In those same weeks, Pierre got two and nine. Week seven, Pierre got 14, and Deshaun gets four. So it's it's either one or the other is going to get the big points. So, and well, the quarter, the quarterback situation in Washington right now is is questionable. I mean, obviously, you know, Colt McCoy is going to start, but Kirk Cousins. I mean, he came out hot at the beginning, but he is just he's terrible. Let's face it. Everyone thought he was going to be this good player that they were going to pick up from fantasy, drop twenty five a week. He's just not any good. I think that because of the struggling quarterback situation that Washington has. Deshaun Jackson and Pierre Garçon will be suffering. I'm going to give my last advice to Darius Sharp right here, and I think this will get him the most points. His running, or I'm sorry, his wide receiver position, he needs to choose between Deshaun or Pierre, and I'm going to go with Deshaun in this case. Um, he needs to bring up Roddy White from the flex, put in the wide receiver too. In the flex, he's got. I'm, I'm going to say he's going to put in Doug Martin. I think Doug Martin is going to – Tampa Bay is going to rely on him to do this. Throwing it in the air is just not the way to do it. And Minnesota has a terrible rush defense, so Doug Martin might get big points. Doug Martin's only getting 11 to 14 touches in his past three games. I just – I don't see the, the – his his carries improving, and I only think he's probably going to get – I mean, at the most, hoping for the best, he'll probably only get 60 yards. Look, they're coming off a bye – Tampa Bay is trying to make a push. They've looked deep. I mean, obviously got blown out by Baltimore, which no one wants to see. And the quarterback situation, Mike Glennon is just not an NFL quarterback, and they know that, and they know they need to keep the ball on the ground for any chance of any kind of success. So that's why I'm saying to start Doug Martin. Um, I just I just have confidence, and I'm going to make this my bold prediction of the week, and I'm going to say Doug Martin gets in the teens, possibly 15 points with two touchdowns. That is a bold prediction. So, um, I, you have anything else to say? Well, about Doug Martin, I just I don't I don't see how the like you can see that he's going to get that many points. I mean, uh, I, well, how I see it is because I'm a fantasy mastermind. I've said this before. Well, I mean, in this situation, it's not looking too good for you because Doug Martin only has. A hundred and thirty. All right, all right. Yards. Look, look, look. We can, we can look in the past. We can look in the past all we want. The Buccaneers are putting the past behind them. All right, what are they like one and six or something like that? You think so, they're just gonna change their offense like all together? Yes. <laughs> Lovey Smith is a great coach, and despite any what anybody says, great coach, but he's one and six. I understand that their defense is atrocious. They love forty-five to the. Baltimore Ravens, who are a mediocre team at best. Man. Look, I understand. I know why you're – obviously, if you made this prediction out of the blue, I understand you – I would probably be denying it. I understand why you're denying it. There's no, there's no like, reason not to deny it, honestly, because it's a huge prediction, but I'm going to say it, and I think Doug Martin's going to do good this week. But uh, do you have anything else to say about either Brandon or Darius' sharp team? Um, looking at Darius' team, you have to think about uh, – Philip Rivers, uh, he's got a bye week 10. Jake Locker is his backup. So you might want to look ahead to the future and probably pick up a quarterback off of waivers. Potentially maybe Michael Vick. I'm making this prediction now because Geno Smith, let's face it, not doing a damn thing in, in New York right now. Yeah, so. but I think he's still got the confidence of the coaches. I mean, he has he has the confidence of the coaches, but how long is that gonna? How long is that confidence gonna last? It's lasted seven games. I mean, that's true, but what what's the Jets' record right now? Well, I know. I'm not saying I'm not saying the record's good, but I'm saying it's lasted seven games of terrible offense, and he's still got the confidence of uh, of uh, Rex Ryan. So well, if Rex Ryan wants to keep his job, he might have to go to Michael Vick to start. Yeah. Let's face it, Michael Vick, the, just being a veteran in this league and having the experience. Altogether, that's better than what Geno Smith brings. Geno Smith, inconsistent, 
Michael Vick, I mean, he's not con- the most consistent quarterback, but he's better than what you're going to get from Geno Smith. Yeah, I probably agree with that. Um, I don't know if he's a fantasy pickup, though. I think you get, you could get, I think, Ryan Tannehill. Um, I don't even know, does Miami, can you check for me if Miami has a game or if they have a buy next this week? I don't know, but if they have a game, I would say pick up Ryan Tannehill. He's been looking hot. Um, and I don't think it was a fluke of the Bears. I think it was just Miami having good offense. But uh, let's see, do they have a game? Uh, the Miami Dolphins have a uh, bye week on, they had theirs actually week five. Okay, who do they so play, do you know? This week, they play the... Uh, they just played Chicago. Looks like they play the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yeah, so I'd say pick up Ryan Tannehill, Darius. I think that's going to be your best shot of a quarterback. Uh, he's the highest He's the highest point scorer that is not picked up on our team in the entire league, on any team in the entire league this year, right now. So Darius Sharp, do that right now. Um, let's do predictions now. What are you going to say about these games? Man, this is this is one of the more questionable games. I mean, obviously you have Darius Sharp, who's been all around. I mean, he's been consistent, but it's been it's a, been a bad consistent. Braden Callahan, inconsistent. I mean, we've seen him score 115. We've also seen him score 60. Uh, I I have to go with Braden only f- the fact that uh, his team is more talented than Darius's team. I'm picking Braden Callahan. He'll probably get in the 90s. I'm saying Braden Callahan, 94. Darius Sharp, 72. I'm going to go with uh, Braden Callahan getting the dub here. No question. Uh, he's going to move to 500, and Darius Sharp's going to be even further from the playoffs at 2-6. and six. Um, It's going to be... I'm going to say Braden gets about 82, and Darius gets about 64. So Braden 82, Darius 64, and those are the games for Week 8. So there you go, guys. Disagree, agree, whatever you want. That's going to be it. We'll see you next week. I'll see you.